Hello everybody. Uh, this video is going to be specifically about uh, chapter 4, homework question number 3. Uh, now this, this problem gave a lot of folks trouble and I tried to provide some cryptic advice uh, not wanting to give away my thinking completely but apparently that really wasn't a very good idea because it wasn't providing enough support for most folks um, which I can tell because a lot of folks did Excel instead of using SPSS to create the graph, which is a, a lot easier to use, I will admit, or drew hand graphs or kind of gave up on it completely. So we didn't experience a lot of success, not, not uh, the proficient level that I need for um, my PMAS projections to work out. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple different ways. Um, I think with SPSS, it is very clunky in terms of and not intuitive in terms of making graphs, but actually has a lot more power and more things you can do with it. Um, so there is an advantage to using SPSS, but, but I have to be honest in that um, for most graphs that you would create, it's probably the easiest way is to use Excel. Um, now, the advice that I was giving you uh, on how to do problem number three um, is, is based on the, the concept that I was trying to teach in our last face-to-face -face session um, in that there's certain ways to set up data that makes it possible to do statistical analysis and they may not seem to be intuitive at first um, but once you get used to it they, they do become intuitive um, and unless you know how to do it you, you can't run your statistical analysis so that was the cryptic advice and it still seems cryptic all right so um, first of all here's the data set now I have to admit that when I um, tried to do the problem myself, um, I, I just typed the data into SPSS. So I set it up the way I wanted to right from the start. And so that's kind of how I was thinking that folks would approach it. But I did download the um, SPSS data files from the SolKind resource section, and I realized that SolKind set it up a different way. And so that, that probably made my advice even harder to follow because you're looking at how SolKind set it up. All right. So anyways, um, SaltKind set it up with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the, the levels of engagement for the 15 students on each day. Um, I was thinking instead to set it up like this. So what I've done here is I've copied and pasted Monday's date over here, and then I put a one everywhere for Monday. And I did a second different way of coding it with day two to show you a kind of different idea. Uh, and then I copied and pasted Tuesday 17, 11, 8, etc. 17, 11, 8, and so forth, and coded it too. And I did that for all the data. All right, now, my whole thinking on this problem was that this is a good way to think about setting up the data because it's good to think about the day as a grouping variable. Like, these are all values that have associated with the first value of the independent variable, which is day of the week. And these are all values that are associated with the second possible value of the independent variable, which is day of the week. Um, so if you get used to thinking about independent variables that have multiple values, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as one variable with multiple values, that's kind of a key idea in setting up data for statistics. Right? And it also happens to work with these graphs, but it's not the only way to do the graphs. So um, for example, if I want to do the graphing using uh, so I'll kind of set up. Uh, th there are multiple ways to do it, and one way that I know is to go to legacy dialogs. And many of these legacy dialogs are, are easier to use than the chart builder, but the chart builder gives you some more power. Uh, but anyways, if I want to go to legacy dialogs, bar graph, uh, let's see, I'm going to do a simple graph, and I think I'm going to do, I have to look at this. Uh, no. I'm going to do a simple summaries of separate variables. All right. Yes, because these are separate variables, the way it's set up here. All right, so I'm going to uh, define, and now you see, it, it allows me to put five different variables in here with each bar representing a different variable. Um, and that wouldn't be the case if it was not summaries of different variables. And probably the reason it's challenging 
to use the um, the chart builder because it's expecting to see one variable on the x-axis. All right, and so I'll just say okay. You see my old histogram there, and there you go. Um, once you know which button to click, it's pretty straightforward. It's but it's not intuitive how to uh, select that. Um, now. I wanted to show you a little bit that I had quite a few choices there and how I could have done that. Uh, and for example, one of the powers of this is that I can represent in my graphs different statistics pretty quickly. And I think this isn't a power that goes beyond what I, at least I know how to do with Excel. So I can choose all of these different kinds of statistics or for example, I could have choose the percentage of cases that exceed a certain value. So I'm going to put a 5 in there. And so this will tell me how many case, what percentage of the cases for Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday exceeded 5. Right. All right, so you can see that um, on Monday about 70% of the cases exceeded 5 and it went down from there. And on Friday, it reached 80%. So there's a lot more ways to slice and dice the visuals with SPSS. All right, but none of that is really what I was trying to get folks to see as a way to do it. Instead, the way that I was thinking of was wrong data set was this way where engagement is one variable and day of the week is another variable. For this I will use the bar chart I mean the uh, chart builder. And I'm going to drag the chart builder there. And I don't need all of this, but this would give me more power there. I'm going to put engagement on the y axis. And I'm going to put day on the x axis. And I'm saying OK. All right, and you see I get the same graph that I got before. Now, um, I also created another variable. Instead of naming it day of the week, one, two, et cetera, I did Monday, Tuesday. And somebody else in the class did this, and I'll show you what happens. All right, it's still set up from before. Now I'm going to use day two, which was my second way of writing the day. And let's see what happens. Okay, I get the same chart except for Friday is the first one and Monday, Thursday. And you can see what it's doing is it's alphabetizing, um, which of course doesn't really, is not really a nice visual where you really don't want Friday to come first in your list. Um, and so that's why it's probably better to use a number system, coding it one, two, three, four. Now, I coded it 1, 2, 3, 4, but when you see the chart, you see it says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Uh, and that's because when I did the coding for that variable, I, I did the values label. So I said 1 equals Monday, 2 equals. But if I was to change this to 5 equals Happy Friday. Happy Friday! And it alphabetized. Oh, no, it doesn't alphabetize. It's one, two, three, four, five, and this is my fifth day named Happy Friday. All right, there are actually other ways to do the bar chart with those data sets, uh, but those, those are the two main ways that I would be thinking about for creating bar charts from that kind of data.